in a world permeated with barbecue websites under the control of tyrannical administrators. There was one man, a one-man army. He broke all the rules. He allowed his members to speak out, give their opinions, and make the website what it is today. Get ready for Greg Rempe and the Barbecue Central Show. Cleveland, Ohio. It's the Barbecue Central Show. Ladies and gentlemen, the Barbecue Central Radio Networks in association with L.A. Talk Radio proudly presents the Barbecue Central Show. Welcome. This is the Barbecue Central Show. I am your host, Greg Rempe. Thanks for joining me tonight. Evidently, uh, L.A. Talk Radio side having issues, uh, but we're live right now. And uh, I am going to... uh, Hmm. That's all right. We're going to go ahead and uh, do the show live as it happens. Uh, So let's go ahead and get right into it. Uh, Probably you're not going to be able to call because you're not hearing me give you the no no live show info. You're just hearing a dead show right now. In case you've uh, found a backdoor Jones to the show off of Audio Realm and you want to call into the show tonight, you're more than welcome to. 216-220-0966. Or you can do uh, the email thing at bbqcentralradio at gmail.com. Either one want to do it, uh, that's fine with me. Again, the number 216-220-0966 or bbqcentralradio at gmail.com. And that's how you want to get in touch with the show. Uh, big show tonight. Here's what's happening. Aside from uh, any technical difficulties that uh, we're dealing with here on the LA Talk Radio side, it's all about pits tonight, folks. Uh, barbecue and grilling season. You know, actually to me, and to the majority of the uh, the, the big barbecue heads of the world, it's not a uh, it's not a season per se. It's all year round. But for the uh, the intermediates and the people that are just beginning, starting to get their feet wet in this whole deal, this is the grilling season. Although you wouldn't know it from today's uh, weather here in Cleveland, with about three to four inches falling overnight, temperatures in the uh, balmy thirty degree uh, thirty five degree area. Nevertheless, uh, we're going to be talking to two different pit manufacturers, actually uh, one distributor and then one manufacturer. Next segment, I'll be joined by Laverne Gingrich from Smoky Mountain Barbecue, their distributor for Meadow Creek Barbecue Equipment. And we'll talk to him about uh, why he decided to rep that line, uh, have him explain to us uh, his different product lines, what's available, and you know why they're better than some of the other pits out there. Uh, following segment after that, Bill Carew. From the, uh, he's the maker of the Carew BQ. Carew, wait, am I saying that right? The Carew, Carew BQ, yeah. And uh, this is a unique cooker in the fact of uh, how the firebox is actually set up. A uh, little different idea in regards to drafting and where the fire is burning from and how it's pulling the heat in. Uh, kind of unique. I actually saw it from a guy on Twitter who I was following and uh, linked in to Bill Carew and thought I'd have him on to talk about this again, kind of uh, getting into the uh, ramping up to the beginning of the season here. So uh, good to have all the information out there, and uh, here we go. So that's what's happening on the show tonight. Fourth segment, Free For All, Laverne Gingrich from Smoky Mountain Barbecue will be giving away his uh, sauces and rubs as well. Uh, here's what's happening at the top of the show. In case you didn't know, Wolf Rub is for sale. You can find out more about that on uh, the barbecue or the bbqcentral.com. Proprietor Larry Wolf has decided to uh, make available for sale the three recipes, and uh, that's something that if you're so inclined to uh, to get into, he's looking to amass ten thousand dollars, and he's asking for a minimum purchase or a minimum, I don't know if it's like a donation or, or whatever, of $25. It, 
and that's a minimum. There's no cap. So if somebody put in uh, 25 bucks and then somebody dropped in uh, $9,975, uh, that would make ten grand, And then those two people would uh, share in the recipe. So if you put in at least a minimum of $25, uh, potentially once that $10,000 threshold is met, the recipes will be distributed to the people that paid in. And uh, you'll have the Wolf Rub recipes, uh, renowned championship award winning. I use them on uh, pork, or at least when they were in business, I used them on my uh, my pork and chicken. Uh, so they're very good rubs. Not too uh, sure about the uh, the whole idea about um, how he's trying to to get money for it. I think if I put in twenty five, if I put in you know five hundred dollars to get it to the ten thousand dollars faster, and somebody put in twenty five bucks, I don't know if I'd want somebody to put in twenty five to get recipes if I'm putting in five hundred dollars. Uh, but again, it's not my uh, it's not my business, and uh, I'm helping a fellow four member try to liquidate his business as best as possible. So that's the idea. Again, you can find out more about it at the website the BBQ Central. Dot com. That's in the general barbecue section. I also want to do a quick review on uh, a, a second Chef Bradley. I had him on a, uh, probably a month ago, uh, six weeks ago, chefbradley.net. He does the diabetic-friendly, low-carb, low-sugar sauces. I did the ketchup review last time. This time I had the Sweet Zing barbecue sauce. This has a honey and molasses with a chipotle pepper zing. And I have to tell you, uh, this was uh, very good. I had it with chicken the other night. And uh, quite honestly, I couldn't really stop eating the chicken. There's, uh, you know, to me, the telltale sign of potentially bad sauce is when you uncap it and you take a whiff. If there's that really strong hint and smell and kick you in your teeth of liquid smoke, I want to pretty much cap it back up and throw it away. But didn't have it. Again, had a nice uh, little backside heat, probably from the chipotle uh, peppers. And uh, otherwise, you know, ketchup based ish i mean you know it's red it's not like super thin and and vinegary like you know some of the carolina sauces but then you know a very good sauce i would highly recommend this one i still have one left which i believe is like the 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 hotter sauce and again he's at chefbradley.net so check him out especially if you're uh, diabetic friendly or if you're looking to go low carb uh, low sugar Uh, and then of course want to keep you up to date on the kcbs and uh this, of course, brought to me, brought to me, brought to you by thepickledpig.com. That's Paul Ostrom, who has uh, graciously done a competition uh, billboard, if you will, for us. And here's what some movement this time. Uh, I know the last couple of weeks there hasn't been a lot of movement from uh, one to ten. Uh, QI, of course, leading the way again now for the third week uh, that we've done this. Uh, they're at fourteen hundred and sixteen points. Uh, next to them, making the jump, I believe they were fifth last week to the number two spot, a lot of bull barbecue. That's Mike Davis. Uh, he's about uh, 340 points off the lead. Wild Bunch Butt Runners in third. Uh, Jack's Old South in fourth. That's Myron Mixon, of course. And then uh, another big jumper up five spots from 10 to five. Rod Gray, friend of the show, uh, pitmaster of Pellet Envy. Learn to Q.com, number six. Cancer Sucks Chicago, out of, .com, out of nowhere. Uh, the last three weeks to number seven, Delta Smoke at eight, Four Legs Up, Barbecue and Catering. Uh, that, of course, is uh, Kelly Wirtz. He won the Jack Daniels competition last year. Uh, he was nowhere in the top ten uh, just a few weeks ago. Now he's at number nine and Blazing Barbecue, uh, number ten. And uh, that's what we have going right now. I'm going to – this is uh, completely off the board. I would never typically do this. Uh, Barbecue Central Radio, name and where you're calling from. Yes, this is uh, Ron West from Houston. Ron, how are you tonight? Okay. I'm trying to listen to your show on the Internet, but I'm not getting it. Is there... Yeah, uh, LA Talk Radio is having just a small issue on their side. It should be up and running here in the next few minutes, so hang with me, and uh, hopefully you'll get the balance of the show. Okay, very good. Uh, but this show, of course, tonight? Uh, we have uh, Laverne Gingrich of Smoky Mountain Barbecue talking about the Meadow Creek Barbecue Pits, and then Bill Carew, the segment after that, talking about his unique smoker that uh, he has made. So, uh, we're looking forward to having uh, nothing but pit talk tonight. And then, of course, uh, free sauce and rub uh, donated by Smoky Mountain Barbecue, which I'm sure you're interested in trying to win tonight. That's fourth segment free-for-all. Yeah, I've been uh, second place twice now, so I'm, I'm, I'm on for the big win tonight. You go. Uh, you're, you're, you have been warned, so get those fingers ready. Okay, thank you. All right, you. Ron, take care. Bye-bye. All right, so uh, that's where we're at tonight. We're off and running. By the way, Paul Ostrom on... 4409 at the Smokin' on Big Creek, Pleasant Hill, uh, Missouri. Competition with 47 teams. Finished first place in chicken. Good job, Paul. It's the way to uh, 
It's the way to do it, buddy. All right, we're going to step away. We'll have Laverne Gingrich when we come back. Stand by. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Show on L.A. Talk Radio. The future of barbecue is already here at thebarbecueguru.com. From the amazing guru that monitors and controls the temperatures of any charcoal, wood, or electric pit to the Caldera Tallboy Knockdown Smoker. Yes, it breaks down and stores flat, yet it's still a robust, sturdy, portable cooker and smokehouse. It also serves as an efficient temperature-controlled convection oven using wood or charcoal. The Tallboy is designed to fit all catering pans and can be used as a warming oven. You can cook in any style you choose, like ribs, chicken, jerky, vegetables, smoked cheese, whatever you want. Take it to KCBS competitions and unload it from the truck of your car. The BarbecueGuru.com is where you'll find the Caldera 3-Bay Caterer. It's stainless steel and uses charcoal or sterno for chafing purposes. And it doubles as a 3-Bay sink or wash station with hot water and knocks down in seconds with no tools required for transportation and storage. The future of barbecue is here at TheBarbecueGuru.com. That's www.thebbqguru.com. Or call 1-800-288-GURU. It's almost that time again. Are you ready to barbecue? Have you taken the cover off your grill yet? Did you start preparing your secret barbecue recipes? Well, do your recipes include chardust, limestone, sawdust? Believe it or not, if you use standard charcoal, you're using those harmful ingredients. Introducing the all-new and all-natural charcoal made by Koshel. Koshel charcoal is made from coconut shells, which cut out those unwanted ingredients. Koshel charcoal is the perfect blend of ingredients, giving you long-lasting briquettes for a great-tasting barbecue. So the next time you fire up the grill or barbecue, ask for Koshel charcoal and get the ultimate all-natural charcoal cooking experience. Visit us on the web at koshelcharcoal.com. That's koshelcharcoal.com. Now. Let's get back to the Barbecue Central Show on L.A. Talk Radio. Barbecue Central Show here on L.A. Talk Radio. I'm your host, Greg Rempe. This portion of the show brought to you by D-Dogs Barbecue Rub. Just in time for spring, Darren from D-Dogs Barbecue announces the D-Dogs Barbecue Stimulus Package. D-Dogs Barbecue will be cutting the prices on all of their rubs. That's the original, the apple, and the maple. We're even cutting prices on the three packs of rubs, so buy some at the reduced price right now at ddogsbbq.com. That's ddogsbbq.com. Remember, at D-Dogs Barbecue, making great barbecue doesn't require a bailout. And as always, D-Dogs Barbecue Rub is better than ketchup. That's ddogsbbq.com. Go ahead and hook yourself up with some. All right, as promised, uh, joining me now as we're trying to gear up for the big barbecue and grilling season, I thought it would be uh, no better time to have a a show dedicated to pit talk, and uh, certainly nobody better to talk uh, to about pits than Laverne Gingrich, uh, who is from Smoky Mountain Barbecue. Laverne, welcome to the Barbecue Central Show. How are you tonight? Oh, very well. Praising the Lord. uh, (laughs) Thank you for having me on. It's an honor to be your guest. Oh, not a problem. Uh, Certainly... Uh, my uh, my pleasure. So, you know, the the first question that I've decided to ask people now uh, here, kind of in a revamped uh, questioning phase, is maybe uh, tell us about maybe the first barbecue that you've ever owned. Okay, um, if you can remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, uh, that might not be a good question to ask exactly for me because uh, I I personally don't own uh, one of the. Uh, the one that I enjoy cooking on most, uh, which is the Meadow Creek cookers. Uh, we, my brother owns a couple of the Meadow Creek cookers. Um, we have a chicken cooker and a, a tank smoker, and uh, we really enjoy cooking on those. Uh, me personally, um, yeah, I've, I, all I've got is just a, a gas grill on the back porch. But <laughs> how did you? Uh, how did you actually get interested in selling uh, barbecue pits? Okay, well, probably about as far back as I can remember, um, I've always enjoyed grilling foods, uh, cooking outdoors. You know, when I was a boy growing up, I would just, I just loved uh, when we'd, you know, cook up some burgers or, or steaks or something on the back porch. And, uh, you know, when you'd smell that aroma coming from the neighbor somewhere, you know, it kind of made me feel like I was missing out. And I, I just, I really enjoy, even to this day, I really uh, enjoy cooking outdoors, um, I could probably do that every day and not get tired of it. Uh, and so when it, 
yeah, so it's just natural for me to to have an interest in that uh, in the cooker market, selling cookers. Uh, and I I do cook quite a bit about you know on the back porch. I'll I'll often go out there and cook up some chicken or burgers or hot dogs, corn dogs, fish, you know that kind of stuff. Laverne, Laverne Gingrich joining us from uh, Smoky Mountain Barbecue uh, out there in the uh, it's the uh, the Amish portion of Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. Is that correct? Actually, we live in Tennessee. Uh, oh, you the do. Cookers <laughs> that we sell are, are made up in New Holland, PA. Yes. Yeah, you've got that part right. Um, oh. it's, it's a little bit confusing. Sometimes people think we're actually Meadow Creek Welding, Meadow Creek Barbecue. Uh, we're actually just one of their dealers uh, who sell for them. The cookers are made in Amish country up there in Lancaster, yes. Okay. So I did. I actually did know that you know, you're a distributor. So uh, one of the, actually my next question was going to yes. be, uh, what led you to choose Meadow Creek as kind of a, a manufacturer to distribute versus perhaps uh, other you know, bigger not bigger names, but, you know, other pit manufacturers out there mm-hmm. that perhaps are on a distribution level. Why choose Meadow Creek versus some of the others? Good question. Um, why I sell Meadow Creek, um, there's a little story behind it, but I, I'm into Internet marketing, uh, website development. I do work for my clients. And I had a friend of mine uh, a little over two years ago that came to me. He was selling Meadow Creek cookers, and uh, he he was just, marketing offline he wanted to go online but he wasn't at the point where he wanted to do a website himself and so we struck up a deal and uh i built the website as the marketing the maintenance all that and he handled the sales and uh, i didn't really you know so i had that great opportunity right there in front of myself and that's kind of how i got into meadow creek and then later as i studied more into it became more familiar with the equipment uh, i realized really what you know, I realized the class and the quality that we were looking at. And uh, the reason I sell Meadow Creek today is based off of that, you know, initial experience. Uh, I mean, in addition to that, you know, initial experience, uh, you know, it's really, they're just really high quality cookers. I mean, if you look at them, um, there's, they're, you know, you're cooking in class, um, uh, some of the probably some of the highest quality craftsmanship. Uh, you know, Meadow Creek. You can be assured Meadow Creek will not cheat you. They'll treat you right. Do their best to make sure you get what you ordered. And another thing is that they they offer some uh, what I call revolutionary cookers. Um, for example, they've got these uh, chicken cookers. Now wait, wait. Oh, Var- don't Go don't ahead. jump ahead don't jump ahead on my question sheet because that was specifically a question I was going to ask you because I really love the chicken cooker okay. portion. But how okay. many? I mean, how I many? Would. Let me back it up a little bit. How many products or how many? Uh, how, what what kind of variety do you offer in in a product uh, category? Okay, we have we have the uh, you know regular tank smokers. Uh, of course, a lot of people are familiar with those with that type of cooker. Right. We've got the offset tank smokers. We've got uh, those range from a little pull around model to, you know, one with a 500 gallon tank. You, you know, you can, you know, on a trailer, you can pull down the highway. Uh, they've got uh, four different standard tank smokers, another small smoker. We've got uh, a full line of pig, what we call our pig roasters, uh, and varying sizes available in charcoal and wood fired. Uh, they've got a, you know, 42 inch, a 60 inch, a 72 inch for varying size pigs, but those can also be used for a lot of different kinds of meat. So although they're called pig roasters, they're just they're a versatile cooker. You can cook lots of different things on them. You know, pork shoulders, um, ribs, even a quarter beef. Lots of different kinds of meats. And then we've got the chicken cookers with the. Uh, the the uh, flip grates on them uh, that are perfect for grilling chicken. They can be used for other meats also. We've got you know little a little pull around model. Uh, there's a collapsible one you can put in your SUV if you want to take it down the road. There's a and we've got them on trailers too with three and four pits. And you can do custom units with maybe eight to ten pits that are long as a semi trailer if you want to. So they really specialize in custom units. Um, we can do, you know, barbecue trailers with a roof, with hinge down roof 
or a fold down roof with a variety of models on it with your chicken cooker, your pig roasters, um, tank smokers, whatever you want. Um, and it doesn't really stop there either. We've got some flat top grills that are really good if you specialize in, in grilling steaks, burgers, that kind of thing, in volume. Uh, those are available charcoal or gas fired. So yeah, it's 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 quite an a quite a variety, um, different you know different models and sizes. No doubt about it. This is uh, Laverne Gingrich from Smoky Mountain Barbecue, and those uh, those quick flip grates for those chickens. I mean, that is like something that's awesome, and I would recommend everybody go to the website there and at least see the video of uh, you know the guy getting them all seasoned up, and then see how easy it is for them him to flip you know however many dozens of chickens at one time. It's uh, it's very unique. Now, aside from the uh, the smokers and the cookers and the pig roasters and the flat tops, you also offer a line of uh, rubs and sauces, some of which we'll actually be giving away here in the fourth segment free for all. Uh, but tell us a little bit about the sauces and uh, rubs here uh, real quick before uh, we run out of time and, you know, what flavors are available, which ones are selling best for you right now? Okay. Uh, we've been focusing most of our marketing efforts on the cookers. Uh, we don't do a whole lot of, you know, don't sell a whole lot of the sauces and rubs online here. We've got a uh, we've got a rich and tangy barbecue sauce. It's uh, probably one of our favorites. Um, it's very good on chicken. Um, I'm not sure how how to describe it, but it's it's just a really excellent sauce for chicken. There's a smoky honey. It's good on pork. There's a spicy classic that's uh, you know great for burgers or a variety of meats. And uh, and we've got a saucy apple and a maple orange. And the rub is, uh, it's a, uh, it's really just, it's an award-winning rub that's really good for chicken. That's probably what we like it on best. Uh, it's good on a variety of meats. It's, uh, you just really need to try it out. It's really something. It's really good. I personally, we have not personally invented these sauces and rubs. I had a, a, another business partner, or I have a business partner, I should say, uh, who was former, formerly into the sales when I first got into, you know, I first got involved with Yoder Smoky Mountain Barbecue and launched the website for him. Um, I kind of partnered up with him, and he's the one that invented the sauces and the rubs. So I don't, I can't really give you the story on how we came up with them or how we arrived at that recipe. Does that make sense? Yeah, but they're good, and people should yeah. go ahead and, and definitely buy some. So obviously, like I said, we'll be giving away some tonight for segment free for all. But what's the website people can go to to a look at the cookers and uh, the various other products, and then uh, get some sauce and rub as well? Okay, go to uh, seriousbbqs dot com. Seriousbbqs barbecues dot com. And that's the place to go. Uh, do and, you have a phone uh, number? Got, okay, we. Yes, let me get that for you here. We've got a toll-free number you can call if you have any questions. If you want to place an order, we'd be very happy to hear from you. It's uh, 877-248-7753. All right, and uh, that's Laverne Gingrich from Smoky Mountain Barbecue. Laverne, thanks for coming on tonight, telling us about you know why you got into the Meadow Creek and the craftsmanship. Uh, of course, the vast uh, the vast product line that you do carry, especially with those chicken cookers with the easy flip handles, and of course, sauce and rub. And uh, appreciate you uh, actually being a show uh, sponsorship here and uh, giving away stuff tonight. And uh, we look forward to having you again on soon. Continue success. Well, hey, thank you so much, Greg. It was really nice to be on, and uh, like I said, it was an honor to share this time with you. And uh, yeah, just come on over to the website. We'd love to have you. We look forward to hearing from you. We really, really want to help you you guys out there enjoy easy and profitable barbecues for many years to come. That's what we're here for. All right, Laverne, thanks a lot. Take care. Thank you. Thank That's you. Laverne Gingrich from Smoky Mountain Barbecue. Again, his website is SeriousBBQs.com, SeriousBBQs. Dot com. Check them out with the uh, sauce and rubs. Uh, that's up for the fourth segment free for all. Uh, I'm going to get out real quick. We'll come back with Bill Carew from Carew Barbecue. Stand by. I'll be right back. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Show. It's almost that time again. Are you ready to barbecue? Have you taken the cover off your grill yet? Did you start preparing your secret barbecue recipes? Well, do your recipes include chardust, limestone, sawdust? Believe it or not, if you use standard charcoal, you're using those harmful ingredients. Introducing the all-new and all-natural charcoal made by Koshel. 
Coast Shell Charcoal is made from coconut shells, which cut out those unwanted ingredients. Coast Shell Charcoal is the perfect blend of ingredients, giving you long-lasting briquettes for a great-tasting barbecue. So the next time you fire up the grill or barbecue, ask for Coast Shell Charcoal and get the ultimate all-natural charcoal cooking experience. Visit us on the web at CoastShellCharcoal.com. That's CoastShellCharcoal.com. Barbecue has never been easier with the Barbecue Guru. The Barbecue Guru is a temperature control and monitor for all pits, charcoal, wood, electric, your pit. It easily attaches to any smoker or pit and gives you simple, trouble-free control of your temperatures so you can make championship-quality barbecue every time and all the time. And it's location-free. Take it anywhere. This amazing breakthrough in barbecue technology is a microprocessor-controlled draft system that uses temperature monitors and a small fan to keep your temperatures constant. The stainless steel Guru Pit Miner gives you a choice of controls from 90 to 370 degrees. So cold smoking, pepper drying, making cheese or jerky or fabulous briskets and ribs is nothing short of effortless. The Procom 4 lets you monitor your pit from up to 600 feet away. And there's more. Check out the full line of products and accessories for the future of barbecue with new items on the way. Visit thebarbecueguru.com. That's www.thebbqguru.com. Or call 1-800-288-GURU. Let's get back to the Barbecue Central Show on L.A. Talk Radio. It's the Barbecue Central Show. I'm your host, Greg Rempe. Thanks for hanging with me through the break. Thanks to Laverne Gingrich from Smoky Mountain Barbecue last segment. This portion of the show brought to you by the, bur- the Barbecue Guru, makers of the CyberQ, the DigiQ2, the ProCom4 wireless automatic pit temperature control devices, not to mention the Caldera Smoker, the one and three bay catering systems that are powered by charcoal, sterno, wood, whatever you like. These are products to make your barbecue and grilling life easier. You can find them on the web at thebbqguru.com or you can call them at 1-800-288-GURU. All right, in keeping with the theme of barbecue pits tonight, we will uh, now hook up with a, uh, a guy I actually found out about uh, from another person I follow on Twitter, and I know uh, the Central Lights pretty much have no idea uh, what Twitter is, and, and to a large degree, but uh, I, I kind of followed a link from somebody that I'm following to uh, Carew Barbecue, and of course, that led me to my next guest. His name is Bill Carew. Bill, thanks for joining hey. me tonight. How are you? I'm great. How you doing, Greg? <laughs> Um, um, I am excellent. Thanks for coming on tonight, Bill. Uh, and, and as I was just saying here uh, in the uh, segment open, I actually found out about you from somebody that I'm uh, following on Twitter who was interested in uh, one of your units or at least looking more into it. I said, man, this is a, a great unit that's definitely out of the norm. We love to keep things outside of the box here on the Barbecue Central show. Uh, so before we get into the uh, Karuba Q, uh, why don't you tell us maybe about the first barbecue you ever owned? Uh, well, you know, uh, I think I, the first thing I ever owned was a grill. It was a Holland grill. And, uh, but the first barbecue pit I owned is one that I built, which was about four years ago. And uh, went through about 17 failures before I could finally got something I was happy with. And um, so it's all been kind of homemade. Home-made. Now, have you always been – so have you not been in pit making before this? Did you have, like, I guess what most of us would term, like a, a regular job? No, I still I have a regular job, still do, and uh, this has been a, a kind of weekend hobby slash obsession slash uh, potential vocation, but it's uh, it's still just a uh, a part time gig. So three years ago, was that more or less the inception or the uh, the brainchild of when the Karuba Q actually started to come to fruition? Well, it started with uh, a friend of mine, a guy we go way back to high school, so we've been friends for twenty five years, and. Uh, he got the idea of doing a barbecue tour and just getting some buddies together and running around Texas eating barbecue. And that grew pretty rapidly into an annual uh, excursion that was generally six to seven joints a day for three days straight. And, uh, and we've, over the years, gone to about 160 joints. And I think I've made just about 100 of those throughout Texas, Kansas City, uh, over in Louisiana. I missed the one out to the Carolinas, which I was disappointed about. But um, that real job came in the way. Uh, and one thing we do, uh, whenever we go to a joint, I mean, we got score sheets and a website and all kinds of stuff like that. And, um, uh, one thing we always do is get back to the pits and talk to the pit boss and look at their pits and see how that all works. And, uh, I have an engineering background and that just became a, a real area of interest for me because, uh, even the best joints had off days. 
And, uh, and, and that depends on, you know, the pit boss is having a good day or, uh, or, or what. So inconsistencies, even in the best joints. And, uh, I started to, to think, you know, there's gotta be a way to figure out how to make a better pit that is easier to operate and produces a more consistent product while keeping the, uh, the more traditional stick burner kind of, uh, propulsion system, if you will. This is uh, Bill Carew from the Carubacue barbecue pit. All right, so uh, I mean, did aside from potentially having the inconsistencies as you, as, as you had just mentioned, I mean, were there other things that about other cookers that disenchanted you, uh, you know, on the offsets or the pellet cookers that inspired you to to kind of come up with this, or was it strictly just the fact that here are these guys, these pit bosses in in the retail business, still having challenges for you know on a day to day basis that they couldn't get that kind of consistency with? Well, it was, uh, it's not so much, um, you know, picking one technology over the other. I, I love the traditional approach of the stick burner and burning with real logs. And, uh, and the problem with that is that is the most difficult pit to control uh, on two dimensions. First of all, it's difficult to control temperature. And second of all, it's very difficult to uh, control the quality of the smoke and the completeness of the combustion. Mm-hmm. And uh, a lot of people start off you know, with a little uh, $100 stick burner horizontal offset type pit and, uh, and end up pulling their hair out because they, they make barbecue that's black and bitter and, uh, and has some creosote taste to it, which is uh, not good for you and not good tasting, at least for most people's right. perspective. And, uh, and my, my obsession was to see if I could figure out a way to, uh, to preserve the auth- authenticity of a stick burner but um, make it easier uh, to, to operate and produce a more consistent temperature and atmospheric environment for your meat. All right, this is Bill Carew from the Caruba Q. And, uh, okay, so kind of let us in and, you know, maybe not talk too far over my heads. And I know I speak for the centralites when I say I'm probably on the uh, the top tier <laughs> of, you know, brains. So, you know, that should tell you something. <laughs> but how does the pit work uh, in its in its essence? And, you know, how is that different from what's out there? Yeah, okay. Well, um, the, the way it works is basically it uh, it turns the fire upside down. So instead of having a, a smokestack that creates a draw that draws hot gas from the firebox in the cooking chamber, it actually has a fan. And so that fan sucks on the cooking chamber and blows uh, overboard, so to speak. And since the cooking chamber is pretty well sealed, um, that creates a slight negative pressure in the cooking chamber, which draws hot gas from the firebox into the cooking chamber. So, so far, that's not very complicated. That fan runs on a thermostat, and that gives... Uh, automatic temperature control, but the uh, the secret sauce, if you will, is the architecture of the firebox itself. That fan is drawing not from the top of the firebox, but from underneath the uh, the grate that the fire is built on top of. And so, when the fan turns on and it starts sucking hot gas from the firebox into the cookbox, it actually pulls the smoke down through the bed of coals through the fire itself um, before it gets. Uh, uh, passed into the cooking chamber. And what that does is it, uh, the coals being hot uh, and with some air vents strategically located adjacent to that bed of coals, that provides the, the oxygen and the heat to, uh, to fully combust all the smoke before it enters a cooking chamber, which guarantees that the pit can't make creosote. Now, when the fan is sucking from the bottom of the uh, the firebox, is there no... Uh, potential for any type of, you know, as the the wood is burning, that, you know, any type of ash is going to get sucked down and, and thrown into the cooking chamber? Well, some of it does. Um, the heavy ash particles drop out uh, immediately, but some of the lighter fly ash particles do get drawn into the cooking chamber. Um, there is a diffuser in there which um, uh, basically uh, splits off the smoke stream uh, underneath the meat. And that gives a chance for those gases to slow down so the ash can, uh, can, can uh, drop out of the airstream. And, uh, and, and so the only ash that ends up uh, being entrained in the air is what you would find in a normal stick burner, just the very, very fine fly ash that, um, you know, as soon as you wrap it up in newspaper and then unwrap it, you can't even, can't even see it anymore. It's so, it's so fine. And there's no other vent on top of this to, to draw air out or anything like that? <clears throat> no, there isn't. The, uh, the firebox itself is uh, vented uh, all the time. And, uh, and what that guarantees is that there's always tons of oxygen around that fire to burn cleanly. Mm-hmm. And so in, in a lot of pits, you know, in the standard horizontal offset, the, 
The problem is that 100% of the power that's made by that fire has to go into the cooking chamber. There's no other place for it to go. And so unless you have your fire built exactly the right size to produce exactly the right amount of heat to maintain the temperature you're after, um, you got a problem. And most people control that temperature in an offset pit by uh, controlling the air inlets. Right. And right. What, what inevitably ends up happening when you do that is you're, uh, you're reducing the completeness of combustion, which in extremes can cause creosote or bitterness of the meat. Hmm. Now, what kind of uh, capacity does your cooker have? Do you have different sizes? Well, I have one that I'm selling, and uh, it's about a 30-pound capacity. Um, so it'll do two briskets or four butts or six chickens or uh, eight racks of ribs if you put some rib racks in it. And uh, and we scaled up. Uh, this buddy of mine went off and bought a uh, an old rotisserie oven and uh, dropped it in my driveway and said, here, see if your technology can work on this thing. So we scaled it up, and it scaled up very well. So I've got a... Uh, a uh, commercial pit, a uh, commercial scale pit that uh, has a 400 pound capacity. It's a rotisserie wow. cooker, and uh, and it tested out great. So the technology is uh, is fantastic in either a, a small or a large configuration. But I don't have those big ones for sale. That one about killed me uh, doing it myself, and I need to find a manufacturing partner to uh, uh, to make that a commercial reality. Now, is it easy to control temperature on this pit uh, because of you know how the combustion is working? And are you going through wood quicker or not as quickly, uh, even though the firebox is more or less wide open? Yeah, the consumption of fuel, you know, I, I worry that it would be a little less efficient because you'll see flames coming out of the firebox uh, at all times. But <laughs> I've, I've compared the math to, uh, to other similar size cookers. And it's about the same. So it's not burning a lot more or a lot less than a traditional cooker. Uh, controlling the temperature is really just set the thermostat and uh, and everything happens automatically. So uh, really all you have to do to hold a steady temp and make uh, crystal clear smoke is just keep the firebox full. And uh, and so my, uh, my 10-year-old son is my pit boss. And uh, when we're barbecuing, I sit him out there and that's his job. And he's just, he pokes a fire and throws a log in there every once in a while and, uh, um, that, that's hands off barbecuing for me. It's not quite a pellet cooker, but, uh, that's good enough for me. That's right. Now, are you any retail locations or are you just online right now? No, I'm just online right now. I haven't gone down that retail path yet. And, uh, you know, with the small volumes that I'm doing, um, you know, it's, uh, it's a challenge to control the cost and all that. So I'm, uh, I'm word of mouth and, you know, in some cases it's hit or miss, but I, I sold a pit to a fella about uh, eight months ago, and I think there have been uh, eight other pits that came from that one. So uh, if I can do it on referrals, I'll ride that as long as I can. No doubt about it. So are there any other products that are coming down the pike aside from the uh, the big commercial cooker? Uh, no, that's that's enough for me. Um, I've got some uh, some sketches of uh, you know how I would apply the technology to uh, to kind of the the more traditional horizontal offset look because I know that's important to a lot of people. They want that big iron and you know, put it on a trailer and all that. And the, the technology uh, will scale perfectly to that. And uh, that's that's kind of the next thing I'm working on is to find a way to make a about a, let's say, 150 pound capacity, almost like a Lang 84 mm -hmm. uh, size pit and uh, and adapt the technology for that. The technology is pretty flexible, so I'm, I'm sure it's going to work. This is Bill Carew from the Karuba Q. Bill, give us a website and uh, any associated phone numbers. We might be able to get in contact with you if we're interested. Yeah, it's uh, karubecue.com. It's K-A-R-U-B-E-C-U-E. -E. And uh, the phone number is 888-K-R-U-B-C-U-E or 888-578-2283. And uh, you can email me at bill at karubecue.com. Bill Carew is the inventor of the Karuba Q barbecue. Uh, Bill, uh, always interested in you know people that are thinking outside the box when it comes to barbecue. And again, this has kind of been uh, maybe not a plan, but definitely a barbecue pit inspired show. Thanks for coming on tonight and sharing your technology. Hopefully, we can get uh, some traffic and sales your way, and uh, hopefully, we can have you back on again soon. Continue success. Thanks a bunch, Greg. I appreciate it. All right, Bill. Take care. That's uh, Bill Carew from Karuba Q barbecue that's a pretty unique device check them out karubecue.com all right uh, it's time to win some laverne gingrich smoky mountain barbecue sauce and rub so get your fingers ready 216-220-0966 call now we'll be right back you're listening to the barbecue central show on la talk radio 
The future of barbecue is already here at thebarbecueguru.com. From the amazing guru that monitors and controls the temperatures of any charcoal, wood, or electric pit to the Caldera Tallboy Knockdown Smoker. Yes, it breaks down and stores flat, yet it's still a robust, sturdy, portable cooker and smokehouse. It also serves as an efficient temperature-controlled convection oven using wood or charcoal. The Tallboy is designed to fit all catering pans and can be used as a warming oven. You can cook in any style you choose. Make ribs, chicken, jerky, vegetables, smoked cheese, whatever you want. Take it to KCBS competitions and unload it from the truck of your car. The BarbecueGuru.com is where you'll find the Caldera 3-Bay Caterer. It's stainless steel and uses charcoal or sterno for chafing purposes. And it doubles as a three-bay sink or wash station with hot water and knocks down in seconds with no tools required for transportation and storage. The future of barbecue is here at thebarbecueguru.com. That's www.thebbqguru.com. Or call 1-800-288-GURU. It's almost that time again. Are you ready to barbecue? Have you taken the cover off your grill yet? Did you start preparing your secret barbecue recipes? Well, do your recipes include chardust, limestone, sawdust? Believe it or not, if you use standard charcoal, you're using those harmful ingredients. Introducing the all-new and all-natural charcoal made by Koshel. Koshel charcoal is made from coconut shells, which cut out those unwanted ingredients. Koshel charcoal is the perfect blend of ingredients, giving you long-lasting briquettes for a great-tasting barbecue. So the next time you fire up the grill or barbecue, ask for Koshel charcoal and get the ultimate all-natural charcoal cooking experience. Visit us on the web at koshelcharcoal.com. That's koshelcharcoal.com. Previously on the Barbecue Central Show. Joining me now is promised pitmaster of Pellet Envy competition cooking team, Rod Gray. How hard was it to actually go back and win this event two years in a row? Every time we win a contest, I never feel like we're going to win another one. To win the same event two years in a row, uh, I can't imagine what the odds are on that. So it was it was an awesome feeling. Do you think that technology and the barbecue industry has actually taken away a little bit from the art of barbecue and the associated competitions? Come on, Greg. You're asking a guy whose team name is Pellet Envy. So obviously the answer you're going to get is no. It's the Barbecue Central Show on L.A. Talk Radio. Welcome back. It's the fourth segment, Free For All. I am your host, Greg Rempe. This is the Barbecue Central Show here on L.A. Talk Radio and the Barbecue Central Radio Networks. This portion of the show brought to you by Yoder Smoky Mountain Barbecue. They're the leading online distributor for Meadow Creek barbecue equipment. These barbecue smokers, pig roasters, chicken cookers, and grills are handcrafted in the Amish County of Pencil of Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. Their goal is to give you outstanding value at the price. Help you enjoy easy and profitable barbecues for years to come. They also carry a complete line of wonderful barbecue and rubs sauces, which we'll be giving away right now. Check them out online at SiriusBBQs.com. That's SiriusBBQs.com. All right, uh, let's wrap this bad boy up for tonight, and we'll go ahead and uh, race over to the phones. It's the Barbecue Central Show. Name and where you're calling from. Caller, are you on the air? Hello. Yes, I am. Name and where you're uh, calling from? Uh, Ron List calling from Houston. I talked to you earlier. Ron. Uh, L.A. Talk Radio. Well, uh, I finally got it. Did it, uh, the show came back up, and guess what? Yes. You're the winner, Ron. Very good. So third, third, three times the charm. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> That's right, Ron. Uh, third time's the charm. Uh, persistence pays off. You're a winner. So uh, all you need to do is go ahead and email me your shipping information. We'll get that over to Laverne, and he will hook you up with the rub and sauce. Okay, I appreciate it, and I really enjoy your show, especially tonight. I'm interested in that, uh, however you saw it, uh, however you say it, carb- barbecue or whatever it is. The Karubacue. <laughs> Karubacue. I'm going to look up their website. Sounds very interesting. Yeah, very, uh, very unique cooker. So uh, once again, thanks for listening, Ron, and uh, we'll hook you up with that sauce and rub. All right, thank you. All right, take care. Bye-bye. Ronless winner, winner, chicken dinner. Love to say winner, winner, chicken dinner. All right. Now uh, I'm going to do this real quick. Barbecue Central Show, name and where you're calling from. Hey, yeah, this is Phil White, Huntsville, Alabama. Phil, what's up, buddy? Uh, not much. You got a <laughs> winner yet on that sauce? Just got off the phone with him. Good deal, man. Hey, that's some outstanding sauce. Is uh, is it is it good? It is real good. Oh, it right. does real good on pork. All right. Well, uh, then it's nice to know Laverne wasn't just uh, blowing some smoke of our uh, proverbial barbecue pits tonight. 
Say again. So it's nice to know that Laverne wasn't blowing some smoke up our barbecue pits tonight. Then it's good stuff. Uh, I, yeah, it it is real good stuff. You know, I swore up and down by Billy Bones barbecue sauce, but this is right up there with his. Well, I wouldn't hesitate to use this in competition. Wow, well, that's saying something for sure. So uh, Ron should be happy with his uh, with his pull. Then I'm glad uh, I'm glad you found it to be of uh, of of uh, the big orange smoker quality. Big orange smoker <laughs> quality. You got that right. All right, Phil, thanks for calling in tonight. Yeah, thanks for the show. No problem. Take care. That's Phil White. A uh, little tardy on the uh, touch tone fingers. All right, before we wrap up, <clears throat> let's do this. Uh, this is going to be a, a first-time uh, first time thing for this. Usually I uh, I go ahead and and uh, give these guys, uh, as I'm wrapping the show up, I give you a little quick idea of what's happening on the show that will be following me here on L.A. Talk Radio. And, uh, of course, if you're a listener of the show long time or if you are just a first-time listener, uh, if you're on the L.A. Talk Radio website, you know the show coming up after me is Broad Topics, and that shows up at 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And uh, joining me live... From L.A. is uh, one of the hosts of Broad Topics. It's Laura Nickerson joining us on the Barbecue Central Show. Laura, how are you tonight? I'm good. No I'm good. Take- I got Kelly Bowman with Phil me, White. too. Uh, oh, hey, Greg. T- we have a ridiculous amount of uh, feedback coming for some reason. I don't know what that means. <laughs> It's my uh, fault. This is it probably be, is. Yeah, a first time. I think. Uh, oh wow, that's uh, uh, that's bad news right there. This is a great idea, but potentially uh, maybe not so good because is is the show playing back to you in your ears or something? It Wrapping is the show back up. To me, both of you at the same time. Give you a little quick idea fun. of what's happening. Yes, in show. In, uh, interesting. So let's see if we can muddle through. Give us an idea of what's going to be on the show here at ten o'clock tonight. Listener show. We're long talking time, about the most important thing in the first world. Time listener, wine. Uh, if you're on the LA wine. Talk Radio website, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I love me some wine. <laughs> uh, what, what in particular are we talking about wine tonight? We're going to talk From to a winery owner about is, uh, how you make wine. We're going to talk topics. about it's how to become Laura a wine Nickerson star. joining us oh my on the Barbecue Central Show. Laura, how are you tonight? Like so much. <laughs> All right. Good, no I'm good. Kelly Bowman with Still me like too. Oh, hey, Greg. Hey, what, Kelly, how are you? A ridiculous amount of feedback. You know what? I have some. We're going to have to figure out how to do this next week uh, without the uh, without the talk back. I'll, I'm going to get together with wow. Sam and uh, we'll we'll figure that out. But uh, I appreciate you guys. Yeah, like, we appreciate the, uh, the shout out. Right the, we'll, we'll get this worked out and it'll actually sound yeah. professional next week. I swear. That sounds like a good plan. I look forward to it. All right, guys, have a great show tonight. That's uh, Laura Nickerson and Kelly Lohman. Uh, they're coming on after me at uh, 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time uh, talking about wine on Broad Topics. So I'll go ahead and wrap up. I want to thank my guests, Laverne Gingrich from Smoky Mountain Barbecue. Check them out at Sirius BBQS. That's SiriusBBQs.com. And then after him, it was Bill Carew from the Carubq. You can uh, find him at Carubq.com. Of course, all proper links and spellings will be found in the show notes, and those will be posted here uh, shortly after uh, airtime and when I get everything uploaded into the podcast form. Next week, we're going to have Chris Schlesinger and one of the all-time favorites of mine here on the Barbecue Central Show. Uh, good friend Ray Lampy will be on as well. And I want to thank Sam for uh, getting the sound back up and running. He's in Southern California. Again, don't forget to stay tuned for broad topics coming up after me at 10 p.m. Eastern. They're talking about wine tonight. That's very important. It's Laura Joan, Kelly, and Jillian. And we'll get that technical issue ironed out and have a, a great live talk up uh, pre pop show next week. And that's it. Congratulations to Ron List for persistence paying off for the free rub and sauce. We'll see you back here again next Tuesday on the Barbecue Central Show. Until then, this is your program host and a proud U.S. American, Greg Rempe. Good night now. It's almost that time again. Are you ready to barbecue? Have you taken the cover off your grill yet? Did you start preparing your secret barbecue recipes? Well, do your recipes include chardust, limestone, sawdust? Believe it or not, if you use standard charcoal, you're using those harmful ingredients. Introducing the all-new and all-natural charcoal made by Koshel. Koshel charcoal is made from coconut shells, which cut out those unwanted ingredients. Koshel charcoal is the perfect blend of ingredients, giving you long-lasting briquettes for a great-tasting barbecue. So the next time you fire up the grill or barbecue, ask for Koshel charcoal and get the ultimate all-natural charcoal cooking experience. 
Visit us on the web at koshellcharcoal.com. That's koshellcharcoal.com. Barbecue has never been easier with the Barbecue Guru. The Barbecue Guru is a temperature control and monitor for all pits, charcoal, wood, electric, your pit. It easily attaches to any smoker or pit and gives you simple, trouble-free control of your temperatures so you can make championship-quality barbecue every time and all the time. And it's location-free. Take it anywhere. This amazing breakthrough in barbecue technology is a microprocessor-controlled draft system that uses temperature monitors and a small fan to keep your temperatures constant. The stainless steel Guru Pit Miner gives you a choice of controls from 90 to 370 degrees. So cold smoking, pepper drying, making cheese or jerky, or fabulous briskets and ribs is nothing short of effortless. The Procom 4 lets you monitor your pit from up to 600 feet away. And there's more. Check out the full line of products and accessories for the future of barbecue with new items on the way. Visit thebarbecueguru.com. That's www.thebbqguru.com. Or call 1-800-288-GURU.